Excellencies, uh, distinguished guests, uh, this 10th anniversary marks a long history of mutual friendship uh, between the GMF and Belgium. It is an honor for me to welcome you once more in the city of Brussels for this prominent diplomatic rendezvous. We just heard very rich perspectives from Russia, the European Union, NATO, and the US. I would like to add a few words from another point of view in my current capacity of Chairman of the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe. Thanks to the Council of Europe, the same binding and detailed commitments to human rights, democracy, and the rule of law have been taken from Lisbon to Vladivostok. 820 million of citizens can bring their complaints to the European Court of Human Rights if they feel that their rights are violated. Tens of thousands of them actually do it. With great discretion, the Venice Commission has a deep influence on the legislative processes in all respective countries. Parliamentarians from uh, 47 countries interact in their personal capacities across all sorts of dividing lines in the most diverse parliamentary assembly of the world. That kind of soft power can sound a bit futile as guns resonate in the heart of Europe. However, considering Europe's history, we can fully appreciate the true value of having a common legal and institutional ground all over Europe. We may disagree about the way we implement human rights and blame each other for our failures, but we refer to the same standards to do so. The Council of Europe has not done away with dividing lines, but it has hand blurred some of them. When the European Union and a European country sign an association agreement, including clauses on human rights, democracy, and rule of law, these clauses refer to legal instruments of the Council of Europe. A common legal and political language has been created in those decades of interaction. Council of Europe processes are not zero-sum games. They are win-win operations. The crisis we are going through in Europe due to the conflict in Ukraine is the result of the use of hard power as opposed to soft power. It is not even a zero-sum game, it's a negative-sum game. Everybody loses. Two million people are more or more are displaced. The Donbass is devastated. Crimea lost its autonomy and ended up isolated when it should be a hub in the Black Sea. Hatred between communities will last for decades. Nobody is winning at this game. Whatever the parties will achieve, they will end worse off than before the beginning of the conflict and accomplish less that they could have uh, through normal political means. We have to restore the primacy of the political process, and the Council of Europe can help. On little notice advantage of the Minsk agreement is that they provide the parameters of a comprehensive political settlement. I'm also convinced that the Venice Commission, if requested by the parties to do so, could do wonders in providing its impartial expertise to define legal frameworks that are based on the best standards of the Council of Europe and provide for a political solution that respects the rights of all concerned. In any case, as chairmanship of the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe, we will continue to do what we can to let soft power prevail in Ukraine and allow the win-win scenario that can be beneficial for all. Firstly, the Ukrainian population in both sides of the military lines. And uh, I went to Ukraine and to Moscow in such a capacity in December, and I will go back there next month, and we try to make some progress with all those institutions from the Council of, of Europe. Turning on um, to the next subject, if I may, after the end of the Cold War, 
It was my hope, like many others, that international trade could be regulated by fair and international trade rules. The creation of the World Trade Organization by the Marrakesh Agreement, now 20 years ago, symbolized this hope. The picture in 2015 of international trade and investment has changed substantially. The WTO has certainly delivered results among uh, orders through its system of dispute settlement, but there is still room for progress to ensure completely, completely that all producers and consumers do not suffer the consequences of unpredictable trade bans or unfair trade practices. We have all witnessed difficult discussions in Geneva on the Doha round. The lack of dynamics in Geneva has given bilateral free trade agreements a boost. The spaghetti ball of free trade agreements is a reality nowadays. On the positive side, free trade agreements represent more than the sum of mercantile benefits as they reflect also a more strategic alliance. The Russian ban on certain EU products has reinforced the cooperation between the EU and third countries. TTIP will update and reinforce the alliance between Europe and the US at a time when both sides are conscious of the importance of the values we share. TTIP is often criticized as a deal for big companies. I believe, on the contrary, that it is a unique opportunity to put into place a substantial strategy for small and medium-sized enterprises. One of the subjects that has dominated the debate of, on TTIP, particularly in the European Union and also in Belgium, is the subject of investor-to-state dispute settlement. Commissioner Cecilia Malmström has presented to the European Parliament some of the ideas of the Commission. I'm sure she will tell us more about this. TTIP acted as a trigger to modernize bilateral investment treaties and to come to an integrated EU investment policy. The TTIP negotiations offers us an opportunity to promote high standards for labor, environment, and investment protection. TTIP should also provide European and American people with greater prosperity. I want to express my support to this process. It is certainly not easy. If it was easy, it would have been done years ago. But the talks continued, and TTIP has already delivered in my eyes regulators from both sides of the Atlantic are meeting frequently and discussing their future projects. I expect TTIP to further encourage and formalize these discussions. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, like every year, I would like to congratulate for their exceptional performance, the laureates of the Young Writers Award. Mark Smith from UK and George Bogdan from USA and invite you to join me if you are in the room. There are both of them. Once again. And I said I really want, would like to congratulate you for your valuable efforts and the quality, quality of the results. Uh, it is good to see that our shared value are still strong enough to convince and inspire young people who will be the leaders of tomorrow, will be maybe not only in the room uh, in the next uh, years, but maybe on the podium to discuss about uh, different issues uh, in different panels. I'm sure that I need to give you some words. If I have the support of the organization, <laughs> I will find those two. It's great. It's very nice organized. And so George Bogdan. And of course,
have a good panel now, I'm sure, and first of all about TTIP.